Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back into some more bite-sized business advice. Out of 130 whatever episodes at this point, I've known like two or three of the guests prior to recording. And this guest is one of my favorite people on the planet. I hope she doesn't oh. let me down here. No pressure, Stephanie. But <laughs> no pressure, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, Stephanie is an amazing human being outside of business, but she's an author, a speaker. She plays the violin. She, I don't even know. She probably fly a spaceship to Mars. Stephanie does so many different things. And I'm excited for this conversation. We're going to talk about creating experiences in your business and how that can make you stand apart from the competition and grow your business. Before we get into all that, Stephanie, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me on. I um pretty sure I was blushing just there. Um, you I almost didn't go to that that party thing we went to up in Jersey because I was like, I'm literally flying across the country to go to a party. And I have repeatedly felt like, I mean, like there's really only like a handful of people that I met at the party that I'm still in touch with that I've repeatedly felt like the entire thing was worth every bit of it. So thank you. I feel the same way. So not me, but probably Ashley, who we met at the party. You probably oh, yeah. Like. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was definitely Ashley was the, the yeah, you know, okay. it was Ashley and then Brandon. Uh, well, Ashley and then Ryan. No. Yeah, there's a whole list. And then this other guy. <laughs> there's a whole list. And then, then there's this, you know, the, 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 yeah, the, no, not really. So um, me and Steph love to have fun. Obviously, that's the whole point <laughs> of this show is to have fun. So thank you for listening, joining us wherever you are watching or listening. But I want to dive in because you are a marketing wizard. My turns, not yours. But I'm going to put that on you. You you just know how to stand out and you know how to be yeah. different. And I think that's that's something that can't be overlooked in a world that we're all told to be the same. We're told to, told to do the same thing on social media, run the same ads, use the same tactics. And yeah. it annoys the piss out of me. And I say it on the show all the time. So I was I just going to say, I just realized I didn't, I didn't ask what we were allowed to say and not say. So uh, good to know, at least I've got at least one word I can say. Here. We're okay. up to piss so all far. Right. <laughs> we're, we're, we're so that limit. behave. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see where we go. Um, <laughs> but that being said, what are we talking about with creating experiences? You host events that are some of the most magical, amazing events that I've personally ever been to. I don't, I don't know that we need to go that far, to be quite honest with you. Like, we don't have to overcomplicate it. That's a bonus. Right. But when right. we're talking about just normal business, uh, you you threw around some names before we started recording, just your average everyday small business. How, yeah. do, how do we go about thinking about what an experience is for our business? Yeah. So touching on a couple of things you said there, one of the things you said, this whole idea of like, stand out, be different, don't do the same thing as everyone else. One of my reoccurring themes for people is just to remember that if you do the same thing as everyone else, you get the same results as everyone else. And most of them are not getting results. You've got a few unicorns that are, but most of them are not. So you have to do something different, which is where my like obsession came with, okay, so how do we get attention, which is how we ended up doing these events. And we're having a lot of these conversations now around how do you create like a next level experience? Because that's what we've somehow managed. I mean, my pursuit of this was just, I wanted to create the best event I could. And now all of a sudden, you know, we doubled in size during the pandemic. We had all this growth. And now people are like, wait, what are you doing? How did you do it? And the next piece that I keep running into is everyone going, oh, well, you know, you do events. So of course you can, you know, do these super special little things because it's at an event. Like you can make a special experience. That's what an event is. And I am pushing back a lot because I'm like, no, every time someone interacts with your brand, that's an event, that's an experience. And if we approach it from that level, so for example, every time we send out a copy of the Marketing That Works book, um, I sign it, we spritz the front with um, some of this of our custom scents. So when they go to pull it out of the envelope, they get a whiff of the scent. And then we have like these, these little, um, uh, we just got these, but these little like music confettis because I do a lot of musical conversation in here. So you open it and confetti falls out. Like that's really, really simple and dumb. And it makes a whole experience. And now since we started doing that, I get people texting me going, oh my God, I got your book. It's so cool. Like 
no one ever texted when they got the book before. And now every time someone gets a copy, they're texting and excited. It's not an event. It's just creating an experience of an interaction with the brand. You mean this book? Is that the one? <laughs> that one. <laughs> I, oh, I love it. Yeah, it's so this is this is what's a, a, always continues to amaze me about you in particular. And I, I know you I know to expect this stuff, but you still <laughs> don't expect it. Like it, everything you do is completely unexpected from the way the books come. Like you said, uh, I my whole desk is filled with like your stuff, which is kind of funny. I have the little cards. I can I can hold this stuff up. Little cards from your events, little quick reminders, marketing prompts. Uh, I have the scent from the the event that I was at that we'll talk about at the end of this episode because I know you're, you're watering at the at the mouth here already listening to this. Uh, <laughs> every single thing like you're talking about, like you actually practice what you preach. It's not just yeah. oh something cool for your customers. So yeah. what are some practical things we can break this down? Because I am not an author and I'm also not going to use that to to write a book. You you write nonfiction, you write fiction, you write books that are 15 miles long. Not everybody can do. <laughs> The, the normal right. person talk to talk to me, Stephanie. I'm I'm the lowest yeah. bar here. So can I do? <laughs> so we're talking about just you know normal. So so let's take um let's take an industry. Um, I'm trying to think of like one like just off the top of my head that is that's not related to anything I do because it's, if I try and use anything I do, then people will be like, well, you're just using your own ideas. Um, and now I'm blanking on like any industry that's not what I do. Um, let's take one that people love to hate. Can we? Are you open for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Can we? Can we use the airline industry? Oh, <laughs> all right. Yes, let's talk about the airline. So, so let's talk about all of the touch points you have with the airline industry. Um, when you're getting your when you're, you're, you've decided you need to go, right? You need to go somewhere. Um, first and foremost, you have getting on their website to reserve the ticket. Um, that is one where you can either create a really cool experience or create a mediocre experience or create a crappy experience. There's always three levels, right? You can create a subpar, you can create an expected level, or you can do something people aren't expecting. And those are the little things that make people feel special when they get it. All of a sudden, like they get it. And now they want to tell everyone about it because they get it suddenly. And so now they become your marketing because they're out there posting about you, talking about you. So you can create a subpar, you can create an expected, or you can create next level. So airline industry, right? You log onto the website, you run a search for the whatever I need to get from you know, San Antonio, Texas to Vancouver, BC. That's the flight I just had to, I just had to purchase. Um, so I get a whole list of like a bunch of different options for how to get there, right? And I have to now go through and I have to like read through 60 different options to try and figure out which one fits my personality, what I want, timelines, etc. What if like what if there was a way where it could say, would you rather depart in the morning or the evening? Would you rather arrive in the morning or the evening? Would you rather only be shown first class, business class, comfort, like where it could take you through a handful of questions. And so you could then narrow it down. So now I'm only getting shown the stuff that really is actually exactly what I want. It streamlines the whole experience for me. You could add in some fun stuff, but even just that level of customization and there's kind of that on a lot of these websites where it's like, select if you want business class or this. But even if I select I want business class, it still shows me the other options. I still have to read through a ton. It doesn't ask me when I want to arrive, when I want to leave. Like, just thinking about each experience and saying, okay, how, what's one little thing I could do to make this a little bit better for them? What's one friction point, pain point that I could do to make this just a little bit cooler. And you could do that with when they're booking the ticket. You could do that with when they're getting the their itinerary. You could do it when they show up to the airport, their interaction with the front desk. As they're walking away from the front desk, you could find ways to make that special. You could find ways to try and make it special as they're going through security. Um, when they walk up to the gate, when they're boarding. I mean, there's so many little moments. And that's really what it comes down to is find a little moment and, and just go, what do I do? How do I make this moment a little bit better for them? And that's probably, as I say that out loud, like my mantra. It was developed on this show. <laughs> yeah, <they're> right there. <laughs> I'm like, perfect. That's a great sum up of exact. But that is how I approach our events because we've reached a point with our events where people are like, wow, you do so much stuff. And I'm like, yeah, 
we've been doing events for almost a decade now. We hopefully do do so much stuff because we should, but it's always come from, you know, one of the things we did at, at the January grow retreat that we got a lot of attention for was we gave everyone a little on the way out the door at the end of day one, a refresh and reset bag. And it was a little bag that said the contents of this bag have been carefully curated to help you sleep better and prepare for tomorrow. It was a little bag. I mean, our cost for the bag was I think under $12 per person. And everyone was blown away by it because as you're leaving, the event is not like you're done. You're done with the event. You got your happy hour. You're getting ready to go to dinner. And then for there to be one more little surprise just blew people's minds. I don't even know how many posts we got on social media over something that small in one little moment as they're leaving. How do we make them leaving the event feel better? Yeah. And I think, you know, the, the airline industry is obviously one thing we can, we can dissect that from you know, each part of the process all, all day. day long. The, yeah. the website piece I think is interesting, which ties back to your events is that's a, that's a computer. You can, yeah. you can make that perfect because you only have to interact with yeah. the computer and that's all the person expects to do. But with yep. your events and with the rest of the airline process, we're talking about the people and, yeah. and how they feel about carrying that experience forward. So when you're creating these little bags that continue on with people, both while they leave the event, but they're still there. And then also when they're running their businesses for the next three to six months. Yeah. That I think is the the unique piece that I think that's what every brand really needs to focus on is how do you continue to make your brand an integral part of your customer's life? If it's not something they use on a day-to-day -day basis, like how can you do those little things that add up? So mm -hmm. what are some ways that you go about designing those things? And we've already listed some of them. We have a book that sits on my desk. We have the <laughs> coffee that I drink every day, like an addict. We have the smell that you give from your events that you pump into the room. So then mm -hmm. like all this planning that goes into it, how do you come up with these things? Because yes, they cost money, but I'm sure the return yeah. on them is exponential over the course of years of people coming back to your events. Yeah. I mean, when you think about the fact that we will, once we get an event, getting an event off the ground is always the hardest part. So when you have a brand new event, getting it going, getting sales generated is always the hardest part. Um, but we are, our event coming up um, in, uh, what is it's June now? Uh, our event coming up in August, the end of August. I mean, we've had only two tickets left for that event um, pretty much since la like last year. We almost completely sold out of that event on site at the previous event. The only reason we have two tickets left is because we only have two tickets left. So I haven't really been worrying about selling the last two tickets, which I probably should actually get on. But like that, when you reach that level, like everything just becomes like self-fulfilling at that point. And now it's just main maintenance and it's so much easier. It's so much easier. I make so much more money because I don't have to stress about filling the room. I know I'm going to be in the black for all of our events. I know we're going to be at sold out or almost sold out because people keep coming back and they buy tickets well in advance. And so it gives me a lot more room to get more creative with these little things. And I lost track of the actual question there. I just got excited. It was good enough. You know, I put the, <laughs> I put, I put the link on the screen. If you're curious about um, that event, which is actually, I went to it last year. It was in Flagstaff. Mm -hmm. It was incredible. I mean, yeah. 12 out of 10 is what I would rate this event. And I recommend it. Anybody goes real quick. Is that yeah. an invite only event? So it is an invite only. You cannot buy a ticket on the on the website. If you're interested, if you go look. So this this year's Grocation is really about how do you craft your custom experience. Um, so if you go to the website, you are interested, you can fill out the form and we'll get in touch. We'll do an interview. We'll have a conversation and make sure one, make sure it's a fit. And then two, um, you know, have the chance to answer questions. It's not particularly a cheap event. It's not intended to be. Um, it's it's really intended to be a, a fairly established event. This is a small event. Um, and so it's, there's there's no way to buy a ticket online, but there is a form if you're interested and I'm happy to chat with anyone who's who's curious for more info. But I'll I'll ease your fears if you're thinking, oh, am I qualified? She let me in. So I don't know what that's <laughs> the general atmosphere of the event. <laughs> Brandon, Brandon plays himself down there a little bit. Um, well, I, here's what I will say. So what we are looking for in our guests is um, what what is public facing with all of our events is we are looking, we, we bring together 
businesses who are already in some level of growth mode. So they're they're usually doing some amount of growth already. Um, they've either had drastic growth and they're looking to sustain. They they're doing a little bit of growth, looking to accelerate, or they're doing pretty good growth and looking to keep that going. Um, we look for people who have like the infinite pie theory, right? I don't want people showing up who are trying to take business from other people in the event because they're operating from a place of scarcity, like. It's three days on site at a multi-million dollar estate being pampered and hanging out with 10 other or nine other business owners. We want to make sure that that's the kind of person we actually want to hang out with. So if you're watching this and thinking you want to hang out with me, then you might be the kind of person. That's all I have to say. There you, go. Uh, you want to be that kind of person. Let me just say that the room <laughs> of people in that room versus the ones that are the opposite of what Stephanie's talking about. That's, I mean, those are the people that, that listen to the show. Like you have to have this abundance mindset and this just yeah. outside the box thinking in order to grow your business. I, the saying is what got you here won't get you there, right? That's, that's the essence of what we're talking about here is you need yeah. to think differently about how you market, how you get different in your business and disrupt the way people think about you. And I love yeah. the fact that you, you have a whole event around creating experiences, mini experiences in your business. So let's say someone's crazy enough to actually want to put on an event, like a <laughs> full scale. I mean, can we talk about this in four minutes? Probably not. We, we, can probably, we can try. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the most important things over the last 10 years of doing this that you've learned? Maybe, maybe a cautionary tale, uh, but <laughs> what are some things you need to consider about putting on an in-person event that's a, a truly an experience that people remember? Okay, so um, I'm going to hit on some of the ones that were kind of the hardest ones. I, when I went into doing events, I had this idea in my head, like the build it and they will come thing is real. It's not. I don't care how good your event is. I'm not going to break that level of language, but I don't care. Your event is not cool enough to get people to show up. You are going to need to spend more time and energy marketing the event than you are building it. And what happens is everyone puts all this effort into trying to build out what they think is going to be the perfect event. And then no one buys tickets. Um, and, and when I say no one buys tickets, like because we do event marketing, I get a lot of people calling me going, so Stephanie, we sold 20% of our tickets and we're supposed to be at 200 and we're at less than 30 and like help, like it's next week, right? <laughs> like I hear a lot of these, this is not an isolated incident. I probably had six of these conversations this year of people going, I put together this really cool event and no one is coming. So one, Stop trying to overcomplicate the event. That's as far as agenda goes. Stop trying to overcomplicate the event. Like, pare down your agenda. We, the event that we just did in May was six hours, seven speakers, one single deliverable. Like, it was how to manage your ADHD better. Keep it simple. And then, way more energy went into how do I market? How do I make sure we are selling enough tickets for this event to not just be, you know, in the black, but man, I want to make good money on this event. And so all like, I think we spent a month and a half planning the event and then like six months marketing the event. So that would be my, my number one is stop stressing out about getting the event perfect and make sure, just understand you're going to have to do a lot of marketing. Um, and then the second piece of advice that I will give is going to sound a little bit contrary, but I'm going to explain. But that is that make sure the event you are putting on is something people actually want to go to. And by that, what I mean is not throw a bunch of content in there and try and make it really spectacular and just throw everything and just try and get to the point where they, they, get, they can just get one thing. And if they can just get one thing, then the whole thing was worth it because it's not. Instead... One, test out your messaging. So if you're going to do an event for something, before you go put all of events are expensive, time-wise, money-wise, events are expensive. Um, before you go put all that into it, test it out, have conversations with people and just be like, like throw out the, the, the title that you're thinking of using and just see if they respond. Don't ask. Don't be like, oh, I'm going to put on an event. We're going to call it this and it's going to give people X. Would you be interested? Because the answer is always going to be, oh, that sounds fantastic. And that means nothing. Until people put money where their mouth is, it doesn't mean anything. So test out your titles, your takeaways. Get single-minded with what you're looking for people to walk away with from that event. Simplify down the event you're putting on. Ramp up the marketing you're putting out. It will make a world of difference. Guarantee it. Mm, that was almost four minutes. That was, it was close enough. No, That's we did good. This was, you you. We jammed a lot into this episode, but I, I the, the takeaway for me is just really, it's the intentionality behind saying, 
I'm not marketing for marketing sake. I, I want to make a difference in the way somebody remembers me and the way I, I impact their lives through my business. And that to me that's is a, the most important part. I love that sum up. This is, this is I want to make a difference in the way they remember me. If we approach marketing from that perspective, if you, if you, every piece of marketing you put out, is this going to make a difference in the way someone remembers me? It will change everything that goes out about your business. I'm going to give you that one too. You can have it free of charge. <laughs> <laughs> I need to your often clearly because I get all of these great gems out of it. So this is this is this must be what it's like to work with you. It's just great gems constantly. That's that's my takeaway today. Oh, we make people cry sometimes too, but we ask a lot of questions. <laughs> that's the whole point. That's how we uncover what's really there. Um, Stephanie, you're a rock star. You over delivered as usual. And you stayed under the piss barrier. So thank you for that. <laughs> if you want more of Stephanie in your life. P.S. You need to go to one of these events at some point. It's on the screen. It's in the show notes. She also does a ton of work with ADHD entrepreneurs. If you want to check out that work too, that's also on her website. So go check that out. Um, and fun fact, she is a luminary in our What If Inner Circle community. So if you want hands-on help, we have access to her and we can get you that help with your marketing. So come work with all of us. It's one big party over here. Stephanie, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me on, Brandon. This was fun. <laughs> And you watching and listening wherever you are, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a minute of this daily nut show that is Harmonious at Lunch. We put this on because of you. We want to make a difference in you and your business and actually cut through the noise and the BS out there and help you get to that next level in your business. So subscribe. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch.